I'm Lauren Burgoyne, the host of Destination Arizona. Welcome to our studios. Every week, you and I are going on an adventure, exploring some of your favorite Arizona attractions and venturing to places you never knew existed. But before we can get this party started, I have to ask you just one question. Are you ready for the wildest 30 minutes of your day? Arizona. When the sun goes down in Chandler, the lights go up. <laughs> Welcome to the Ostrich Festival, a three-day circus featuring moonwalking sea lions, booty-shaking music, and of course, the main egg-laying attraction. This is as close as we're going to get to the ostriches today. They're not as friendly as the camels, but I can tell you a little bit about them. Compared to any other land animal, they have the biggest eyes, and their brains are actually smaller than their eyes. But check these guys out. They're looking a little bit sleepy now, but ostriches can run more than 40 miles an hour. A little too fast for my taste, so I decided to hop a camel. Co-host, Isaac. To get the complete tour of the ground. Thank you, Isaac. But this family-friendly event also has plenty of old-fashioned favorites, like the Ferris wheel, where we caught up with the president of the Chandler Chamber of Commerce, Dave Warkington. Is this your first interview on uh, top of a Ferris wheel? Absolutely, it is. We're ranked one of the top 10 festivals in the nation. It puts us on the map. And Chandler, frankly, has so much going for it. You know, we just announced uh, Intel, a $5 billion expansion here in Chandler, uh, PayPal, eBay, a uh, big expansion here. And so we're becoming the high-tech capital of Arizona, which is pretty amazing. Top five reasons to come to it, would you say? Uh, let's see. Well, the ostriches, of course. Uh, there's camels. There's lots of animals. There's a petting zoo, which is really cool. We had uh, three lambs born yesterday in the petting zoo. It's the, the entertainment, amazing. The spinners, you, the spinners you, you, are Yeah, it. the rides, obviously, the fair food. You're, you're reading my mind. The deep fried Snickers would be a top five for me. Yeah. Did he say deep fried Snickers? Time to pop this wheel and give in to my sugar craving. Dave is triple dog daring me to eat this cotton candy before riding. Oh my gosh, what is that? Take a look at that. That's sick, that's what that is. That's, that's sick. We're not even gonna get into why we're calling it sick, but Dave, are you gonna join me on this ride? I, uh, no. And on our way over to the worst decision I'm making today, we learned that cotton candy serves more than one purpose. Hey, besides eating it, what else can you do with a piece of cotton candy? Um, you can use it as a pillow. Use it as a pillow? Yes, here, take some of this. That's a good one. Okay, so use it as a pillow. What else? What else? Um, maybe to, um, you know, make a ball and like just throw it at your brother or something. Multi-purpose. Wait, I can wear it. Here we go. Let's see yours. What are you going to do? was empty, it was time to hop aboard the demonic disco ball, and for your viewing pleasure, my photographers insisted on having the cameras rolling, and there was nothing I could do to stop. ready for it. In the meantime, it's on to my next destination. Thanks for coming out to Ostrich Fest. Wait, bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Feel free to wave back, everybody. everybody. When I'm 
I'm in Scottsdale and I have a craving for fine dining. I want something with spice. I want something with flair, but I don't want to go home hungry. So I often find myself here at Avalon, which is really a desert oasis for your appetite. You're going to want to follow me because you never know what's going to happen once we go inside. Now, foodies everywhere are going to be pretty jealous of me right now. I am standing in the coveted spot here. The executive chef, Brandon Krauser, here at Avalon in the kitchen today. And uh, we're getting ready to be seduced here, Brandon, because the ingredients smell so good. Everything you're making looks delicious. So let's get right to it. Very local. What are you going to prepare for us today? Well, we have a Avalon mussels dish. It's our Santa Barbara mussels. Very popular dish here at Avalon. We use the Santa Barbara mussels because they're meatier and fattier. That's why I like them a lot better than any other muscle. Here are the ingredients. Now I'm also noticing your, your fresh ingredients here, yeah. and they're Arizona grown. Everything, yep, the tomatoes, the herbs, the garlic, the shallots, and some poblano chilies, all from local farmers around Arizona. The Shriners Merguez sausage is actually a Shriners downtown. We put these all together into one and make a nice little butter sauce out of everything. Mm -hmm. so. Now this is that? probably perhaps my favorite thing you're gonna be preparing today. We've got crab cakes. Yep. We sure Talk do. about the crab cakes. The crab cake is we use a fresh crab meat here. No filler is our is our role here at Avalon. It's just crab. Mm -hmm. We put a little bit of corn, lemon, and a little bit of uh, onions in there, but that's it. No no filler, no no breadcrumbs, no egg whites or anything like that. Sear it off on a cast iron pan, a little black garlic and a little corn puree. Simple but delicious. Now Brandon, I wanted to ask you, a lot of people mm -hmm. think I'm coming to Arizona I'm not gonna be ordering seafood, but that's not the case here. So nope. <laughs> let's talk about that a little. We get our fish in daily. I have a really good relationship with a couple of fishmongers in Santa Barbara. I've got one here in Arizona, the uh, Japanese fish auction in Tokyo. So we, we get everything in daily. You've got Every the hookup with the fish. Oh yeah. That's now good. I wanted to ask you too, as a chef, what is your favorite ingredient? What is like the Brandon's well, signature spice? We use a lot of togarashi here at Avalon. It's a uh, chili spice, it's got sesame seeds, it's got nori, it's got dashi in it, it's, we've got uh, pineapple in it, kind of a Hawaiian Asian chili spice we use on a lot of our fish products, definitely in the mussels, so really good ingredient. And also something, Brandon, I wanted to point out, because I think this is this is fabulous about this place, is that you guys change up your menu a lot, yes. and that's because you're calling the farmers yep. on Monday morning, mm -hmm. finding out what's fresh. Is yes, that they say, you know, the, the farm here in Arizona, the farmers change their produce a lot because of the weather and the seasons are one season pretty much throughout the entire year. Right. So they, they change a lot of their products. So we call them up on Monday, me and my chef de cuisine will sit down with what they have, and we'll put a menu together with what, with what they have talk to the fishmongers and go from there. Excellent. Well, I certainly want to uh, get out of your way mm -hmm. and uh, so that we can enjoy later, but I want to thank you and uh, I'm excited you. to see what you're going to do for us. Today. All right. All right, we're going to start with the Santa Barbara mussels. You always want to start with a very hot pan. Mussels first. That helps get them going, get them open. Just start with that. All of our other ingredients we've been talking about, the sausage, the poblanos, the tomatoes, garlic, shallots, and herbs, all at the same time, right in there. Trying to get them all together. Let the vegetables sweat a little bit. And salt and pepper, everything. Very important. All right, togarashi. Once you see the juices coming out of the vegetables and the sausage, we're gonna hit it then with a little bit of ver juice. So white wine vinegar. I'll get, our, get all the flavors together really nicely. Let that boil off a little bit. You can see the muscles are gonna start to open now. Just like that. And then we always finish it with the good stuff. A little bit of butter. A little bit of cream. And some white wine. Finish it all off. We'll let that cook together. It takes about two minutes. Once that butter is uh, melted, you're pretty much good to go. Make sure all your ingredients are together. Then the fun part is the placement. 
So I like to put them around the bowl. See those big, fatty, nice muscles we got there. I like to place them all like this, make them look nice. Just like that. You got a nice circle of muscles. Just the ingredients right on top. And we got our Avalon mussels. Like to finish with a little bit of char grilled bread. Soak up all those juices. There you go. Bottoms See up. how meaty they are. They're so much Very better than. Here we go. Yeah. Like spices from the merguez sausage comes out into the broth and the poblanos and really good beautiful. stuff. So. My favorite part that we were talking a little bit about yep. the top camera is the dipping of the bread into the sauce at the end. Isn't that yep. just kind of like... A lot of people ask for more bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, they, if they didn't soak it all up, they're going to want some more bread. Here I go again. <laughs> Chowing down before dinner. Can you see the Eiffel Tower, or how about the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Well, I'm going to save you money on a passport because you don't need to go to Italy or France to take advantage of those grapes and those fabulous wines. And here to tell us all about it here at Avalon today is our resident sommelier, David Johnson. David, thanks Cheers, for joining Lauren. us. Cheers. Great to be here at Avalon. I always love to drink Cabernet Sauvignon. Most people recognize that Napa is one of the preeminent Cabernet Sauvignon producers in the world. Obviously, Bordeaux. Who's had a beautiful Super Tuscan Cabernet Sauvignon like this one? This particular varietal is 2004 Carpinto, Farnito Cabernet Sauvignon from Tuscany. If you've never enjoyed how beautiful and supple and earthy and old world a Cabernet Sauvignon can be, you really do need to try a beautiful Tuscan dish. It really lends itself, obviously, to the beautiful food here. There's a Castillo Paralata, five fincas. Five fincas is basically talking about the five grapes that are used in this wine. Tempranillo, Garnacha, Merlot, Syrah. These are all grapes that they use in Spain to make a fantastic wine. You know, I'm looking across the table right now and I see that beautiful Tracy Dempsey Creme Brulee. And it makes my mouth water. And I think, what would be the perfect fortified wine accompaniment or after dinner wine accompaniment that I want to enjoy with that beautiful dish? And the first thing that comes to mind is Porto. And when I think of Port, I think of Sandeman. They've got this fantastic 20-year-old tawny port by Sandeman. Just fantastic. Think about your dessert wine aged 20 years before put in the bottle, shipped over here, and brought to you right here in Scottsdale. So have a copita of Port at Avalon and salute. This segment is sponsored by the new Grand Prix and Santan Ford. Buckle up, audience. You're now on the fast track. Blankenship. This is Mike Blankenship with Universal Technical Institute. And with us today is Brad and Jacob Person with uh, Jacob Person Off-Road Racing. Brad, tell us a little bit about how you guys got started in off-road racing. Well, we, uh, it's been a family sport for quite a while. I've, um, my dad started me in it back in the early 80s and we went through the 90s running the short course series and desert series and kind of stopped when we had kids and Thought I was done with that part of my career, and my son decided he wanted to race his quad that we had for a play toy. And uh, once I saw him fly the 90-foot tabletop, I decided I, he needed something around him, and so kind of got bit by the bug again. And well, like he said, I started out on my quad, and uh, it started out just me and my dad and my grandpa. We threw it together last minute before our first race, and in, in our garage, 24 hours build and then uh, went out to the first race and had a blast and got hooked from there. The best part about it is I get to go out there and at the races, I'm the driver. I got, I got my pit crew, which are guys from the UTI school with our internship that help me out and I tell them what I need done and they know exactly how to fix it. So that's the best part. That's awesome, Jake. Now, before we get into life as an owner, tell us a little bit about your career in racing and what gives you the, the credentials and the background experience to help get your son started. Well, um I think I've been through a lot of the school of hard knocks, uh, you know, from the business side, but as far as off-road racing, uh, I've got uh, a couple wins at the Baja 1000 over my, my career, uh, the Mint 400 and uh, several stadium podium, uh, finishes there at uh, the Mickey Thompson series in San Diego, LA, much of the stadiums. Well, tell us a little bit about the differences between a, uh, uh, being a rider and a competitor in the sport and being a team owner. Well, the team owner costs a lot more, <laughs> um, but uh, no. But who says Jacob gets to have all the fun? 
video shot? For the ZTV? <laughs> 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 Day in the tank, Marley arrived just in time for his victory lap. Or maybe not. And proved that wearing these goggles weren't improving his driving skills. Well, come on, Dan, hustle it in, hustle it in. It's how the camera guy did that. Okay, the camera guy did that. We'll let you go again one more time. No, that's all right. <laughs> I got beat pretty bad. While Marley didn't go home with any medals, the former Suns player got back on the court. Max, come here and shoot for me. But does he still have game? Right. Nothing but net. And he still managed to spare a few minutes to sign an autograph or two. But before heading home, Dan traded in his jump shot for some wicked jumps in the dirt with his kids along for the joyride. Thousands of feet in the air, a piece of history takes flight in Mesa, Arizona. Fully restored from its fighter days of World War II, this warbird paints a picture across the sky of the sacrifices veterans made more than 65 years ago. The B-17 is just one of the restored relics on display here at the Arizona wing of the nonprofit Commemorative Air Force. We have six aircraft that we operate, uh, as well as the other aircraft in the museum. And we pride ourselves in the fact that we're uh, one of the flyingest museums. The aircraft that you see here, with very few exceptions, all fly. But these flying machines aren't just for looks. They're meant for time travel. I'll be uh, doing my pre-flight inspection. Uh, we check our fuel, our oil, uh, various other points of the aircraft. Right now I'm checking the hydraulic fluid for the uh, uh, hydraulic system on the aircraft and uh, make sure that it doesn't need service before we fly. We're good to go. And once the plane was ready, you know the Destination Arizona crew was first in line to climb aboard. Okay, it looks like you got the machine guns off to the side there, Mr. Dennis. 
<laughs> I guess these are for you. As we buzz down the runway, the years seem to melt off the plane. We were honored to have a very special guest on board with us, a World War II veteran who lived to tell about his own sentimental journey. Well, this is a picture the Germans took. When they captured the American flyers, they took their pictures. So if you escaped, they knew who they were looking for. Or when we had a picture check in camp or roll call, they had this check. Yeah, I spent 18 months in Starlight 17B. Climbing aboard the bomber was all it took to trigger memories of being shot down for this POW hero. This is the radio room. We ditched one airplane in the English Channel when they couldn't get all the way back to England. The cripples running on two or three engines. When this thing hit the water, I'm down like this. I thought my chest was going to go right through there and push so hard. And these guys were all kind of raised up and wasn't up against the boat right there. When it stopped, it seemed like there was a foot of water in there. But we all clambered out through the top, and you're hollering at each other. See, when you hit the water, there's a couple of handles, you pull them. And automatically, the thing would pop out on that side, the one on this side. And they both to inflate. Only one did. While stories like these are getting harder to come by, the pilot and the crew are doing everything they can to keep them soaring. You know, there are just three of us up here, but this whole airplane depends on our several hundred members. And without all the members, the mechanics, the ground crew people, the coordinators, the ride coordinator and tour coordinator, and uh, all the people who uh, work as docents in the museum, uh, we wouldn't be sitting here. So we get to have a lot of fun, but there's a lot of work that goes into each and every one of these flights. Hi, my name's Lass Solis. I'm a colonel with the Commemorative Air Force, the Arizona Wing. You're watching Destination Arizona. Welcome to the Renaissance Festival. I'm joined with 20,000 other people who are on their hunt for their alter ego today in Apache Junction. People who want to transform their normal everyday selves to be the kings, the queens, the wizards, you name it. So my next stop is the costume shop. We'll see what happens when I return. Are you sure this is the only thing in my size? I look like a dude. Perhaps a television host back in the Renaissance would probably be dressed as a, a pirate wench. Oh, oh no. scandalous! Oh, no. Scandalous! No. So it's back to the dressing room for one more gown. I think she's ready. Lady Lauren! Oh. Oh. That's right, you minions. All hail to your queen. Well, Thank you, I think I could get used to this. Now that I was dressed the part, my royal posse and I made our way through the festival, where once upon this medieval time, merchants lined the streets hawking baubles and beads, and there was no shortage of access to throw or personalities to meet. What do you get when you combine a duck and gunpowder? A duck, a duck hunt? Like the, like the video game maybe, no? No, actually you get a firecracker. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's foul humor. It is foul humor. But nothing could have prepared me for this. You ready for the tallest, okay. Are you ready for the tallest interview I've ever gotten? Let's see if I can do it. Okay. Oh, there she's going. Well, hello, Lady Lauren. <laughs> hello, Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome. Thank you. Oh. My dear lady. Mwah. <laughs> Enchante. What, what is in that mug, by the way? This water, my dear. I am not going to be high and drunk. So tell me, what is the secret to, to standing on these stilts? Lots of practice, years of walking on these things. It works your butt like crazy. After years of this, I can take a piece of coal and just mm, make a diamond. Huzzah! Do you have a problem finding mates your size? Oh my gosh, I have to go to Sweden, go for the tall models there. It really helps. I mean, you're pretty tall yourself. I'm just saying, if we get you a little bit more of a heel going. So how, many, how many hours of training would it would it take to get me to you know up to your caliber? I don't know. You got pretty good balance. I'm thinking. Um, you know, maybe about four or five years. You got it down solid. Okay, so maybe four or five years. I won't be hosting the show because 
Tall, dark, and handsome and I are going to be on the road together. Okay, thank you. Now I gotta run, Miss Princess Lauren, but we gotta do the acrobatic show in a moment. Help all your friends out here come see us. Barely balanced at the Renaissance. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, he got my number. Well, I had certainly worked up an appetite. It's They're emu. Delicious. It's emu. emu. Yes. Describe it for me. How does that mean? Describe oh it to someone God. who's never had one. Oh, my God. It's, it's greasy, so and the meat falls right off the bone. And, and it just kind of melts in your mouth. It's easy to swallow. Yeah. You don't have to chew that much. <laughs> it's it's freaking bomb. Is that the best thing to eat here if you had one thing to pick? Yes. 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 Definitely eat this. It's the best. A bite? I'll go ahead, dude. Oh, okay. Really? Uh, okay. Ah. Give me a napkin. Mm, thank you. Napkin? Good. Good. Sweet. <laughs> Did you hear that I eat other people's food? Is that what's known around the park? <laughs> now it was time to get back to work as the royal paparazzi. Finally, my exclusive one-on-one -on -one with his royal majesty, the king. Is there any message you'd like to give to the people of Arizona? Yes, come and bring lots of money so we can tax you. This, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. We have so many wonderful shows here. It, it would be a shame to miss out on any of it, truly. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll drink, you'll eat. Uh, there's so much to do. I'm not... Every, everybody's invited to dress up and partake. Oh, most definitely. You do not have to, but if you do, we do take a little bit more of a notice of you. If you take the time, we'll try to take the time as well. Okay, thank you, King. We know you have a lot to do today, so here we go. How was that? Again. And while I was certainly getting used to my title as Lady Lauren, all fairy tales have to come to an end. So, it's on to my next destination. Wow! Wow, that was awful! Don't go anywhere. Coming up next week on Destination Arizona, why athletes from all over the Southwest are lining up to make a splash in Tempe Town Lake, and why dragons are leading the way to the finish. 4,000 pounds flying about 70, 80 feet. <laughs> yeah. Plus, we'll find out what happens when I get behind the wheel of an off-road truck. Sweet jumps. So I heard that she, she lit the piano on fire and it yeah. went up in flames. And you'll never guess which poker face is stopping traffic in downtown Phoenix. I'll give you a hint, it's not even me. Poor John. What am I gonna say about this ostrich? So this is, this is as close as I'm able to get to my in-depth interview with the ostrich. There, grab the money that you'll be waiting frantically above your head. But I should tell you, it's not the point where you go sneaking off out the back. The Dead Bob Show is not over. And nobody's required to tip. <laughs> Um, I drank it without really drinking it. Me too. I fake drink it. I fake drink it. I was like, yum. Yeah. <laughs>